Now this is my presentation on using technology to manage stress. My name is Harry Campbell and I am the author of the book What Stress Can Do. I'm also the president of Biofeedback Resources International, a company that provides biofeedback equipment and training for healthcare professionals and individuals uh, to use at home as well. You see my contact information there, the website, phone numbers, and email address. A very important concept is the concept of fight or flight uh, when we are talking about stress. And in many situations, there can be a physical threat that we are exposed to. And in those situations, we either need to prepare to defend ourselves or to get out of harm's way. This could be from a truck almost running us over or someone attacking us, anything like that, where there's a physical response that's necessary. When there's a physical response necessary, it does make sense for the body to react and prepare to deal with the situation physically. So when that's the case, then there's no problem because the physical responses in the body are used to protect the body. And after the danger is over, then the body goes back to its normal state. The problem comes in when the thing that we're exposed to that causes the reaction is not requiring a physical response. So this could be a upsetting phone call, an argument, pressures at work, financial problems, and so on. In these situations, there's not a physical response that's required, but the body still re reacts in a way that there is. So it prepares by tensing muscles, increasing heart rate, increasing blood pressure, and so on. But then there's no outlet for that preparation. The energy is not used, and that energy stays in the body and has the potential of causing problems. The other problem with that is that these are the kinds of things that we're exposed to every day and many times a day. And so if the body is constantly responding to these things or reacting to these things and not going back to a normal state for enough of the time, that's where we get into problems. This image is showing many of the things that happen in the body as a response to stress. And on the left side you see the noticeable effects and on the right side you see the hidden effects. There are things uh, like shoulder and neck tension, heart rate increasing, fast breathing and so on. Then you also have uh, changes in the brain, adrenaline being produced, glucose uh, being released by the liver, and increased blood pressure. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, uh, as much as 90% of all illnesses and doctor visits are related to stress. The reason that uh, so many illnesses are related to stress is because of the fight or flight response interrupting all of the uh, systems in the body. And if the normal function of the system is interrupted, then illness can result. Stress also causes the brain to work less efficiently for performing mental tasks because it switches into an emergency mode where it's really only focused on certain things. Decreasing negative stress reaction can help improve performance for this reason. Here are some of the methods for decreasing stress and everything from meditation to diaphragmatic breathing, essential oils, even laughter, and biofeedback. And the last thing I mentioned is biofeedback, which is the um, technology-related um, way of decreasing stress. So biofeedback uses computerized technology to help you learn to control or manage your stress responses. And it does this by measuring the responses and feeding those signals back 
in the form of information so that you can learn how to control the levels. These are the different things that we can measure with biofeedback. We can measure muscle activities, surface skin temperature, usually from the hands or the feet, skin conductance, which has to do with how much sweat there is on the skin, heart rate and heart rate variability, respiration or breathing, and EEG, which is the electrical activity that comes from the brain or otherwise known as brain waves. This is an example of EMG sensors placed on the person's face to measure facial muscle tension. Releasing tension can be important in uh, performance, in, in sports, as well as other activities. And this is just an example of some football players uh, practicing uh, releasing tension, uh, which uh, you normally wouldn't think about related to football, uh, which is such a um, uh, aggressive and, and in some ways violent sport uh, with a lot of tension and muscle and so on but in between the plays which only take maybe six seconds a piece uh, you want to be able to relax and, and release tension and uh, conserve your energy for the next play and that helps in improving performance this is an example of the uh, difference between the heart rate activity uh, in a more stressed uh, state, in this case uh, fr uh, motion of frustration, and, and then after the line there you see uh, appreciation, which also during that part uh, the person was probably also practicing diaphragmatic breathing. And you can see how the, the heart rate pattern is much smoother and regular. So can clients really understand biofeedback? Yes, we live in a high-tech world. I'm sure you're viewing this on some sort of technology, a computer, or a phone, or a tablet. Uh, biofeedback communicates faster than words. So uh, if I try to explain to a person that their muscles are too tense, um, it may take me a long time to get that point across but with biofeedback they can immediately see the level of muscle tension from second to second changing on the screen right in front of them and I don't really have to explain it to them. To them. They see it. Even small children can understand biofeedback. We work with children as young as four years old. This is an example of a astronaut, a Canadian astronaut, uh, where they were measuring brainwave activity, breathing, and other uh, measures to um, see what the changes in physiology are um, under different conditions, either space or underwater and so on. This is showing a athlete that uh, won a gold medal uh, in the Olympics and part of his training included 150 hours worth of biofeedback and neurofeedback training. And this is an article that talked about the AC Milan soccer team that won the World Cup uh, several years ago and they believed in biofeedback so much that they set up uh, a special training room where they had multiple biofeedback stations for their athletes to train on. And this is showing a psychologist, Eric Pepper, who is uh, working with people in uh, the office uh, settings uh, at the computer to make sure that they're uh, learning how to relax their neck and upper back muscles and also their, their wrist uh, muscles while they're working at the computer and also that they're breathing properly to avoid the types of repetitive strain injuries and in, in, uh, neck and, and uh, upper back injuries and pain that uh, might result from misuse of the muscles and so on. And this is just showing some of the different biofeedback devices that are available. Some of them are available for use at home and, and others would be used in a professional's office, a uh, healthcare professional's office. And here is my book, What Stress Can Do. It is available on Amazon.com. You can also uh, go to my website, biofeedbackinternational.com, for a free uh, section, a sample of the book it gives you a chapter to uh, read uh, if you're interested in looking at that. And uh, in summary, stress causes 
disorders and decreases performance. Reducing stress reaction reduces stress-related disorders and improves performance. And biofeedback gives individuals the power to learn how to regulate their own physiology, which helps them to reduce negative stress reactions faster. Thank you. And I'm offering uh, free biofeedback demonstrations and uh, free sample of the book to anyone who uh, uh, it sends me an email or gives me a call. There's my information and uh, my website. And thanks for your time and look forward to hearing from you with your comments and questions and uh, uh, requests for demonstrations. Thank you.